I'd like to say thank you to those who have subscribed my videos. You are the main drive that keeps me making these videos. If my videos have somewhat helped you, there is nothing I'm more proud of than that. As of now, I have 15 subscribers, and one of them is my wife because I forced her to do so. So for the 14 of you, I love you all. Sorry, honey. I'm gonna stop my Oscar speech now and talk something useful. In the previous videos, we talked about the most basic dose response model in this course. Today, we are going to talk about a little bit more complicated model. In this model, there is an agonist and there is an antagonist. We can write the basic model we learned in this form. R is in equilibrium with dr, and the rate constant is d over kd, and dr has a response. Intrinsic activity is q. The reaction you see here is essentially the same as what we learned in previous videos, except that d over kd is the rate constant now, meaning that r times the rate constant equals the product, which is dr. So by rearrange it, we move dr to the left. We have r d over dr equals, we move kd, the denominator, to the right. So we still have kd, which is the dissociation constant, equals r times d over dr. So today, there is competition. We have an antagonist. We denote it as A, antagonist. And the rate constant is A over Ka. Ka is the dissociation constant of A and R. Please note that the rate constant of the reaction between antagonist and the receptor is written at the bottom of the equi equal sign because the rate constant represents the rate of the reaction going to the left. Ka equals A times R over AR. Only DR here will give a response, but AR doesn't. So now we have the response Q, which is a function of both D and A. So both antagonist and agonist, but only agonist gives a response. We have three equations of state. Of state. We have RT equals the free form plus the binding form dr plus the binding form ar. We have d dt. We assume it is the same as the free form. We have at. We assume it is the same as the free form of a. Let's number these equations for easier reference because we are going to look for the function form of Q. And Q is A times dr. In equation 3, on the right, we have R, the free form of R. We have dr and ar. So we are going to replace R and ar with some terms that contain dr. Let's rewrite equation number 3. RT on the left, we don't have to make any change of it because RT is a constant in the system. We have to replace R with something else. So we use equation number 2 to do the substitution. R is KD times DR over D. That is good because we have KD, which is a constant, DR, which is what we're looking for and d, 
which is an independent variable, and a plus dr plus ar. So how do we replace ar? We have to use equation number one. ar is a times r over ka. In this new term, we still have r. So we have to replace the r with kd times dr over d. So on the right, we have dr in every single term. We can factor it out dr times kd over d plus 1 plus a over ka times kd over d. And uh, you can do the rearrangement to move dr to the left and everything else to the right. So this is some basic algebra and you can do it by yourself. I'm not gonna waste time here. So in the end, you have the form of Q equals A times RT T over D plus KD 1 plus A over KA. So EC50 is KD 1 plus a k a if you write the equation in this form you are considering d the independent variable a in this case is a constant so the value of ec50 is determined by kd by ka and by the concentration of the antagonist in the system if the antagonist in the system is zero, EC50 would be KD itself. In this case, it is the Clark's model we talked about where there is no antagonist. If we draw the rectangular hyperbola, if there is antagonist in presence in the system, this part will not be zero. It will be bigger than zero and uh, EC50 will be bigger than KD. And the new rectangular hyperbola will have a EC50 that is larger than KD. So the curve will shift to the right. The higher concentration of the antagonist in the system, the higher EC50 it will be. The more the curve will shift to the right. Given the values of KD and KA, you should be able to calculate the numerical value of EC50 at different concentrations of A. The equation we have is regarding D as the independent variable. We can also consider A, the antagonist, as the independent variable. In this case, D, which is the agonist, will be a constant. On the top of this page is the original form we just derived and uh, it uh, regards d which is the agonist as the independent variable while keep a which is the antagonist as as a constant but in this form you are considering a as the independent variable while d is a constant so during an experiment you cannot vary to variables. You have to keep all the variables constant except one. That is which you want to examine. In the second form there is no EC50. Instead there is IC50 which is Ka times 1 plus D over KD. So IC50 is determined by Ka, Kd, and the concentration of agonist. The higher the concentration of agonist, the higher IC50 will be. So IC50 is the concentration you need to achieve 50% of the inhibition effects. If you increase the concentration of agonist, as we said, the IC50 will be bigger. 
So IC50 will shift to the right. It will be like this. If you keep increasing the concentration of agonist, IC50 will shift even further. So there are three rectangular hyperbola in this rectangular box. You are varying the concentration of antagonist while keeping the concentration of agonist constant. The further the curve is to the right, the higher the concentration of the agonist. Also in this box, there are three rectangular hyperbolas. Here you are varying the concentration of the agonist while keeping the concentration of antagonist constant. The further to the right the curve is, the higher concentration of antagonist is in the system.